A man named Ben, Logan Miller, is shown attempting to solve a problem in order to escape a falling chamber. He seems to be trapped in a room and must find the clue to the door. He manages to find the clue through the picture frames and attempts to open the door, but it seems that the code is not working. He is about to get crushed as soon as the walls of the chamber are getting closer and closer. Then, the movie cuts to another scene, three days earlier. A seminar on the quantum Zeno effect was attended by timid physics student Zoe, Taylor Russell, who believes that a system cannot change while you are watching it. Over the holiday break, her lecturer pushes her to take a chance. Ben, Logan Miller, the stock boy at the grocery shop who was earlier visible in the falling room, is angry that his supervisor won't give him a promotion to a better position and a greater salary. Young stockbroker Jason, J. Ellis, is well liked by his co-workers for leading an active lifestyle. A puzzle box is given to each of Zoe, Ben, and Jason and is signed by their respective trusted acquaintances, Zoe's professor, Ben's boss, and Jason's client. After completing the game, a hint directs them to the minus escape room where, should they manage to escape, they could win $10,000. Zoe, Ben, and Jason are waiting with Amanda, Deborah and Wall, a war veteran, Mike, Tyler Labini, a former miner, and Danny, Nick Dodani, a fan of escape rooms. The door handle breaks off when Ben tries to leave the room to smoke, shutting the interior and exposing an oven temperature gauge. When Mike discovers a copy of Fahrenheit for 51, Zoe raises the thermostat to that number. All but Danny, who doesn't think the heat is real, get terrified when embedded heat panels gradually turn on and raise the temperature of the room. Amanda is visibly uneasy, so Zoe attempts to soothe her by giving her a drink from the water cooler. The group notices an escape vent to the next room opens when they all simultaneously push down on six coasters after Zoe notices a sign asking for coasters to be used for beverages. Jason leaves the room first, followed by Mike and Amanda, while Zoe discovers that adding water to a glass will keep a coaster in place long enough for her to go. When there is no longer enough water because Amanda drank a glass earlier, Ben and Danny scramble to cover all coasters with glasses. Ben pours the contents of his flask into the last glass, and the two flee just in time as the room catches fire. The gang, with the exception of Danny, becomes worried about how realistic the game is becoming at a mountain cabin. Each room's cameras are inactive while the group requests assistance. Jason searches for a seven-letter name associated with You'll Go Down in History to open the cabin door. Prior to a head-on collision, Ben experiences a flashback in which he was singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer while driving with pals. Ben gives the group the code Rudolph, and when the cabin doors and windows close, the group leaves and enters icy conditions on a frozen stream. Jason discovers a door that requires a key while the others discover a compass, fishing rod, magnet, and ice fishing hole while exploring their surroundings. When the group finds a red parka that they alternately wear to remain warm, Jason becomes worried. The group successfully removes an ice cube encased key. Danny tries to use Ben's lighter to melt the ice cube, but he loses it in the ice and drowns. The gang is devastated by Danny's passing and concerned by how planned his demise was, noticing that he slid into the ice when he reached for the lighter. Jason persuades the others to form a huddle and use their combined body heat to melt the ice out of fear of hypothermia. Jason is able to crank the lock after they find the key, but the door does not open. Just as the last of the remaining ice gives way beneath them, the group flees across the stream through a brand new door that suddenly opens. A bar with pool tables is located in the third space. The moment the group walks in, they notice that the atmosphere in the room has changed. When they see a door without a doorknob, Mike assumes it must be that door because the eight ball missing from the pool table is the doorknob that is stashed somewhere within the bar. The group is warned to be cautious when a telephone cord falls from the ceiling. A loud dial-up sound is followed by the start of music. A section of the floor disappears with each repetition of the sequence. Behind the bar, Amanda scales the wall and discovers a safe that requires a four-digit code. In a sliding tile puzzle that Zoe solves, the group discovers the numbers they require, but they are unable to access the safe. In a flashback of an aircraft crash in which she was the only survivor left upside down while everyone else was buckled into their seat, Zoe briefly loses consciousness. As the floor crumbles to bits, Mike, Ben, Jason, and Zoe gather by the door. 
In order to reproduce the environment of the room, Zoe instructs Amanda to enter the numbers backward and inverted. Although Amanda successfully unlocks the eight ball, she is unable to join the group by securely crossing. Amanda sacrifices herself, and just before she hits the ground, she throws Jason the eight ball. The group enters a hospital ward with beds that are exact replicas of those that each of the game's players were treated in after being declared the only survivors, Mike was the only miner pulled alive after a cave-in, Zoe survived a plane crash, all of Ben's friends were killed after he drove drunk, and only Jason was found by the Coast Guard after he and his college roommate's boat overturned in icy waters. The group learns that Amanda was the only soldier in her unit to survive an IED detonation in Iraq and that Danny's whole family died from carbon monoxide poisoning. The remaining survivors realize that elements of the game have been based on their life and that they all entered the escape room together with the intention of seeing who would be the luckiest out of the lucky. According to a TV broadcast, the group only has five minutes to survive if they put their all into it, after that, the room would fill with deadly gas. To determine the ideal heart rate that will guide them to the following room, Jason, Ben, and Mike locate an EKG machine. In an effort to outsmart the game designers, Zoe uses the quantum Xeno effect to her advantage and turns off all of the cameras in the area in the hopes of escaping. Jason accidentally murders Mike by zapping him multiple times with a defibrillator because he thinks a rapid heart rate will rescue the group. When the room starts to fill with dangerous gas, Jason straps himself to the EKG and allows the toxin to cause his heart rate to drop to under 50 BPM. Jason and Ben are able to escape when the door to the next room opens, but Zoe declines to do so because she allegedly collapsed and died after turning off the last camera. Ben and Jason walk inside the fifth room, which has optical illusions painted on the walls and furnishings. Ben believes Jason was not the only survivor out of choice and is outraged by how callously Jason killed Mike and neglected to aid Zoe. Ben shames Jason into confessing that he intentionally killed his roommate at sea so that he might survive using the red parka because of his actions in the game. Ben and Jason are exposed to a hallucinogen when they enter a hatch leading to the following room. Ben discovers the antidote injection meant for just one patient, and the two battle it out to the very end. Ben kicks Jason into a table corner, breaking his leg, but killing him instantly in the process. Ben leaves via the last room. The last room brings the audience back to the movie's opening events. Ben successfully extinguishes the fireplace's flames and uses it as a crawlspace to avoid being crushed. The game master, who creates the escape rooms, welcomes him when he exits the last door. The participants, such as college athletes, lone survivors, etc., are chosen by the game master, who also reveals a unifying theme, and then betters follow. Ben anticipates being able to leave the game having triumphed but the Game Master attempts to have him killed in order to keep the game's secrets hidden. By removing an oxygen mask from the hospital bed and threading its tubing through one of the gaps left by the broken cameras, Zoe is able to survive. When two cleaners come into room number four to destroy evidence, Zoe pretends to be dead, knocks them out, and runs away. Before killing the Game Master and running away, Zoe succeeds in rescuing Ben. Ben and Zoe are given medical attention for their wounds, but by the time Zoe and the investigators arrive, the escape room's evidence has been completely destroyed. After identifying the location of the Minus Escape Room headquarters in New York from their emblem six months later, Zoe persuades Ben to travel with her. Unbeknownst to them, the game's designer is trying to lock Zoe and Ben into a different game by making their flight a simulated escape with a 4% chance of surviving. We see a group of people experimenting the next game of survival. A black, hidden character can be seen on a screen, confirming the team to initiate the next survival game for Zoe and Ben by saying, let's play again.